Hello, my name is Doug Reinemann, and I'm Professor of Biological Systems Engineering at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where I direct the University of Wisconsin Working Research and Instruction Laboratory. In today's discussion, we'll be dealing with the issue of teat barrel congestion. This is the accumulation of fluids in the teat tissues in the barrel of the teat Fluids accumulate in the tissues of the teat barrel in response to the vacuum applied to the barrel of the teat. This is the part of the teat that is located in the mouthpiece of the liner. So, teat barrel congestion is influenced primarily by the level of vacuum in the mouthpiece chamber of a liner during milking. Mouthpiece chamber vacuum during the peak flow period for most cows is generally at a low level of between 5 and 15 kPa. This is because the teat barrel seals in the liner barrel and mouthpiece vacuum remains low. At the end of milking, when the teat collapses and becomes narrower, the teat barrel no longer seals in the liner barrel and the mouthpiece chamber vacuum increases to levels near the milking vacuum level. There are several fundamental factors that influence the level of mouthpiece chamber vacuum during milking. The first of these is the fit of the liner to the teat. The second is the design of the liner. The third is the level of overmilking in the herd. And the fourth is the vacuum level used for milking. There are several aspects of liner fit that will influence the, the mouthpiece chamber vacuum level during milking. The first is the diameter of the liner compared to the diameter of the teat. In order to maintain low mouthpiece chamber vacuum levels, the diameter of the liner must be somewhat smaller than the diameter of the teat. The second aspect of liner fit has to do with the length of the teats compared to the mouthpiece depth of the liner. In order to maintain low mouthpiece chamber vacuum, the barrel of the teat has to seal in the barrel of the liner. In order for this to happen, the teat has to be long enough to extend into the barrel of the liner. The mouthpiece depth is a measure of the distance from the top of the liner to the top of the liner barrel. The teats must be longer than this distance in order to fully penetrate the liner barrel, create a good seal between the teat barrel and the liner barrel, and maintain low mouthpiece chamber vacuum. Mm -hmm. There are several aspects of liner design that can influence the level of teat barrel congestion. These all have to do with the fit of the teat barrel in the liner barrel. Some of these design aspects include taper of the liner barrel and the shape of the liner barrel. A third aspect of teat barrel congestion is the degree of overmilking in a herd. When overmilking occurs, the teat sinus collapses and teats become much narrower. As a result, they don't seal as well in the barrel of the liner. This creates higher mouthpiece chamber vacuum and consequently results in the congestion of teat barrel tissues. Teat barrel congestion in a herd can be assessed with the other teat observations. Approach each cow to be assessed straight after the teat cups are removed. Use palpation as well as visual observation, also employing an external light source to help you with each of the teats. You are looking for evidence of color change in the teat barrel such as blueness, or also for evidence of ringing at the base of the teat, which can often be a sign 
that teak congestion has been an ongoing problem. Record your observations as you go, ensuring that you make sure you have put down the observations for each cow before proceeding to the next. A fourth aspect of teat barrel congestion is the milking vacuum level used in the herd. Of course, the higher the level of vacuum used, the higher the potential for congestion of all sorts, including teat barrel congestion. The vacuum level at the end of milking is particularly important because that's the time of milking in which teat barrels are most susceptible to congestion. So highline systems and midline systems are more at risk for teat barrel congestion because the milking vacuum level increases at the end of the milking session. In today's session, I hope you have a better understanding of what teat barrel congestion is, what its causes are, how to assess it in the herd, and how to suggest ways to reduce teat barrel congestion. Teat barrel congestion is important because it affects the comfort level of cows during milking. Cows that have highly congested teat barrels often step and kick at the end of milking and can kick units off prematurely. Excessive teat barrel congestion can also influence the time it takes teat, the teat tissues to recover after milking or restore normal circulation and full teat canal closure. Thank you.